Hey guys, it's Vera91, and I'm talking about Nintendo's E3 Direct. Okay, now, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't anything really to write home about either. This was just an okay Direct. It was like one of those where, yeah, all those games, okay, they look pretty good, but it's like, uh, there was never, like, that one big moment in the Direct, or there was never, uh, like, the one, I think, big surprise. But there were some good game announcements here, and the first start was, this wasn't a game announcement, but a character announcement. It's kind of cool. One of the Tekken characters is coming to Smash. That's kind of cool. It's like, th there's no real say-so about who's coming to Smash, really, like, or where they're coming from, either. So, it's just kind of cool to see that the Tekken character is joining Smash. But, where I started to get really excited for this Direct was when they announced that they were bringing back old Mario Party levels. Now, if you guys recall from my What I Want to See at E3 2021 Nintendo video, I actually did say I would want some DLC, right, of the, like, old Mario Party maps. And they announced it's going to be old Mario Party maps, and you're going to be able to play them. But then my excitement went way, way down when I realized this is a new game. I don't know why they wouldn't simply make this, like, Super Mario Party DLC. I'd, I'd even pay, like, 20 or 30 bucks if this was like Super Mario Party DLC probably. So I don't understand why they wouldn't just make the Super Mario Party DLC. Why would they make it a, a game in and of itself? It's really just some of the old maps. I think over a hundred of the old mini games or maybe just a hundred and whatnot. So I don't get it. Why not just make this DLC? Like call it old school or something like that. I don't know. But in any case, it was still a welcome addition. I still may get the game if it's not like, if it's like a $40 retail game, I'll probably get it around Black Friday when they drop it a bit probably. But in any case, I w would have rather Super Mario Party DLC. But Super Mario Golf did not disappoint. It, we already knew about this game, yes, but they revealed the battle mode and they plan on having some free DLC and free characters. So that's pretty good announcement. That battle golf looks really fun and it looks so different than the other modes. So that was definitely a really welcomed announcement. And then there was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. This is just a throwback. These games were where it was at. I remember playing the original Tony Hawk on N64 at least. I'm not sure whether that was Pro Skater or not, but that was pretty fun. Like, these were just games pick up, you do tricks, you do what you want, and it was, it was just one of those, it's just one of those games where you really don't have to, like, um, there's no princess to save, there's no fights to be had, it's just pick up, get on the skateboard, do tricks and whatnot. So it was a really fun game, and I probably wouldn't mind picking up these two games, like, especially if they're not the $60 set. Now, if they're $60, eh, but these games look good, and it looks like they've kept a lot of the old stuff, like, where it's just, you want to do tricks, you do tricks, you know, they didn't get, see, I understand for those of you guys who want more realistic experience, there are the skate series, but for people who just want to pick up and kind of just do tricks, kind of like with uh, a couple buttons or movement to the joystick or whatnot, these are the games for them, and I'm more one of those. They showed off a new Metroid game, right? But it's not Metroid Prime 4, unfortunately. It was Metroid, I think they said 5, which is Metroid Dread. And it's kind of like, I think, um, the Game Boy Advance Super Metroid remake. So it's kind of like, you know, it's a side-scroller, I think, and you just play as Samus. And it's not that it looked bad, it's just I think people right now are looking for Metroid Prime 4. And that may have been a little disappointing to get, like, a new Metroid game, but not the one that everybody seems to be wanting to get. Because Metro Prime 4 was announced in 2017 when the Switch came out. And yet we haven't heard really much about that game since. Except, like, I think they did say, like, two years ago that they had to basically start again from the ground up for it. So I guess that may be why it's taking a lot longer to come. But hopefully Metro Prime 4 does get talked about soon. I'm not personally a fan of the Metro Prime series. But I know a good amount of people are, so hopefully they at least talk about that soon. Then the show came to a close with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah, they showed some pretty good stuff actually. They showed like how the world's gonna look, some of the stuff you're gonna be able to do. And it was an overall good trailer. But they announced it's set for 2022. And that makes sense. I mean, with all the stuff that's been going on, it, a lot of games have been delayed. So I'd rather them take their time and do a good job on the game than try to release it more or less unfinished. But in o overall, this Direct wasn't the best, definitely. And I didn't really get that big new or whatever announcement that kind of was waiting for, but it was okay. Good amount of games. Many of the games they showed seemed like pretty good games. No Switch Pro. Yep, no Switch Pro. It had some pretty good announcements and even with the ones that weren't announcements, they showed off some pretty good gameplay in some of those. So overall, an okay Direct. 
anyway, what did you guys think about Nintendo's Direct this year? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. May God bless you all.